بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد continuing on on our درس in basic fiqh from hadith or a hadith of umdata fiqh or umdata al-ahkam we reach the hadith, we're still in Tahara, we reach the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam which illustrates for us the ruling you know why the Muslim has to or where the ruling comes from regarding making ghusl when a Muslim is junub, meaning after sexual relations, that we have to wash ourselves. We have to take a bath before it's permissible to pray, and it's recommended to do it as soon as possible, as we mentioned in some of the previous ahadith of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So this is the hukum uh, from the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. An Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu, أنا أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إذا جالس بين شعبها شعبها الأربعة ثم جاهدها وجب الغسل وفي لف في مسلم مسلم وإن لم ينزل in this hadith of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that was narrated by Abu Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه he said that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said if one of you sits between or sits between the four limbs, this is the literal translation, then jahada, that he has relations with her, then he must have ghusl, he must make ghusl. And this was in, uh, that was the narration in Bukhari, and then in the narration in Muslim, there's Ziyadah, and he said, وَإِن لَمْ يُنزل. When لَمْ يُنزل. Meaning, and even if he does not ejaculate. Letting us know it is not a requirement that a person ejaculates in order for them to have make ghusl that just for having sexual relations akramakum Allah with your spouse the fact that a man has entered his wife then akramakum Allah he must make ghusl he must wash himself from uh, during the, the bath he must take a ceremonial ghusl or bath and during the beginning of Islam in the beginning it was a restriction or the, the hukum was different. This hadith here, this abrogates the prior hadith which was in the beginning, which came before this hadith in the beginning of Islam where uh, it wasn't a requirement to make ghusl because of the, the, the Prophet ﷺ said as we're, we're going to reach in this hadith in the explanation that the the ulama mentioned. We'll, we'll read this and we will uh, gain this benefit. So some of the things we gain from this hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam first is that it's an obligation to make ghusl, to wash oneself, to prepare for the prayer after they have had sexual relations. Even if they have uh, not ejaculated. Another benefit of this hadith that the, uh, the scholars mention is that this hadith is, it abrogates the hadith of Abi Sa'id al Khudri radiallahu ta'ala anhu, where, and the, the, the narration is al ma min ma, that water is from water, meaning that sperm is from water. So, meaning that, and that the meaning of that hadith which was in the prior to the this hadith 
of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was that as Shaykh Ali Bassam uh, Rahimullah Ta'ala mentions, he says, Al-Mafhum minhu bi tariq al-hasr Ennuhu la ghusl illa min, min inzal al-mini So in the beginning of Islam that even if a man and a woman they had sexual relations akramakum Allah that they did not have to take a shower before prayer unless they ejaculated so this hadith we just read illustrates for us that it abrogates that prior hukum that prior ruling the prior hadith and that regardless of whether the man or the woman ejaculates in if they so if they do not akramakum Allah or if they do they still have to make ghusl the fact that the man entered his wife akramakum Allah then it is necessary to take a shower and wash oneself uh, in related in relation to the Islamic uh, ceremonial bathing and those are just some of the uh, benefits that the Sheikh mentioned rahimahullah ta'ala may Allah have mercy upon him that we gain from this hadith but it's important for us to know the evidences for our belief and our fiqh and how we practice Islam and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil anything I said that was correct was from Allah anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam